I'm Todd Grindall. I am the co-director of the Center for Learning and Development at SRI Education, where I study how policies and programs shape the development of young children and children with disabilities. Through our work, we're out talking to teachers and in classrooms all the time. Uh, and one of the big issues in early childhood over the last few years is getting some sense of what is actually happening in those classrooms. The parents need that information, the policymakers need that information. And so over the last 10 years, we've developed these systems for measuring and evaluating programs. Uh, and there's some good purposes to that. Right? We determined we don't want to provide public funds to programs that are dangerous and not helping kids. Um, there's also some downsides to it. Uh, and so as one visit we were having out in a rural child care program, uh, we're sitting down and talking with a teacher who was sharing her experiences of one of these evaluations. Uh, and she talked about how one out of 187 of the school days, some stranger came in the classroom sat in the corner, jotted down some notes for about an hour, and left. So two, three months later, the teacher then gets this giant stack of papers like this uh, that have reams and reams of jargony language. And the essence of what it was saying was that you're not good enough. Uh, and as the teacher was relaying back this, back, relaying this back to us, just tears in her eyes, uh, heartbroken, talking about how hard she works to do this um, and how much she loves and cares for these children. And to hear that information uh, that, um, that she wasn't good enough, she didn't meet these standards, uh, was really crushing and that she was ready to leave the field. She was ready to quit her job and go do something else. And it was just through the efforts of all her colleagues to say, no, that doesn't fully measure who you are as a teacher. Uh, that got her to stay and, and to continue. Um, so this got us really interested in how do we take that information that could be potentially really useful for teachers and provide that in a way uh, that doesn't crush their spirits, but helps to lift them up. We've been collaborating with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation on the development of principles for using observation to support teachers' development rather than just to measure it. Um, this is part of a range of things that we're doing uh, for the Gates Foundation to try to build up these supports for what's called instructional coaching. Instructional coaching is the process by which a, a mentor or a more experienced teacher forms a relationship with a teacher, comes to visit that classroom, collects some information about how that classroom is doing, shares that with the teacher, they make a plan for how they're going to improve on some things, build on their strengths and address some challenges, and then move forward and keep that cycle going and going again. So with Gates, we first laid out, what does the, the information that you collect, what does it need to include? What are the really important components? And how do we know if that measure has been successful in collecting those? So that is to help to inform both the work of organizations that are building these measures, academics and commercial entities that are building these measures and selling them to schools and to school districts, but also to education agencies who are purchasing them to look at them and say, does it measure all of the things in all of the ways that are outlined? States have these rules that say programs have to be observed. They have to be observed and have to be rated in order to be able to receive public funds. Well, during COVID uh, and the more intense parts of the pandemic, it was quite difficult to send a stranger into a space with 20, 25 children uh, to sit there for an hour. So they began bringing video cameras into the classrooms. Uh, and the initial assessment of that was that that did not work very well. There were all kinds of questions about data security, questions about what kinds of cameras, where do you put it? How do you mic the classroom properly? How do you get that information and safely and securely store that, store that in a place where it can be coded and provided back? So within all those challenges was some, some opportunity 
a realization that it is really expensive to send folks out and to collect all of that, uh, to collect those observation data. Particularly the, the classroom I was talking about in, uh, in a rural part of the state, the, obs the observers got to drive two hours, stay overnight. That's a very expensive endeavor. Uh, and so Gates had gotten interested about whether the use of video, if we could understand how to better use video within classroom, we could make uh, the collection of this observation data less expensive and thus do it more often for more people and to provide the kinds of continuous feedback. We've been really interested in the ways that teachers talk to children and how that helps to support children's development. So we've known this for a long time. We've known for a long time that when you ask children open-ended questions, it helps them to expand their critical reasoning, to grow their thinking and their ability to, uh, their ability to solve problems. When you use varied and advanced vocabulary with children, they pick up that vocabulary as well. Similarly, in the, the ways that we talk to children, the, the sorts of, um, the ways that we, we praise them for their work. So there's praise that is oriented towards uh, the product. That was a really great drawing right there. That's a, that's a beautiful drawing. I love it. I want to hang it up on my wall. Um, or the process. I really like the way you went about doing that. I saw you had some trouble and you solved that problem. When we focus on the process, it helps children to develop this growth mindset that they can grow. Um, we worked with our colleagues in the Speech Technology Research Lab, the STAR Lab here at, uh, at SRI, to develop a system, a machine learning system, that identifies those, automatically identifies those aspects of teacher speech. Uh, so teachers wear a microphone and they just go about teaching their class during the day. And we collect all of this information and then are able to provide back to them the number of open-ended questions that they asked in a given day, the level of their vocabulary, the sorts of content they focused on in their vocabulary. How did they praise children? Did they focus on the product? Or did they focus on the process? Um, and had some great success in our ability to do that identification with, with the Star Labs uh, machine learning work. We are now working with providers of teacher professional development to integrate those tools into their suite of services that they're providing to teachers in the hope that teachers can, with this information, working with an instructional coach, identify targets for improvement in their teaching and track their progress towards those targets on a day-to-day -day basis. Our disability work is foundational, and I think it continues to be uh, some of the most important work understanding, first understanding what the experiences of these kids were in school. Uh, you know, there was this effort in the 1970s when the law passed that said, Everybody gets to go to school. Students with disabilities get to go to school. And then we went 15, 20 years, and we didn't quite know what was happening. Were they really getting access to school? What was it like for them? How were they succeeding? What kinds of courses were they taking? What was happening afterwards? And it was the SRI work that really, through painstaking research, following these kids over years and years and talking to everybody in these kids' lives, uh, that we began to get an understanding of what that was like. And it's been, I, I think you've seen how that work went from academic and research and into policy and into changes in the reauthorization of the law in 2004. And I think whether you're talking about disability or education work in general, like that, that's those set of projects that were done here in the 80s and 90s, I think are a model for how we in this part of the field uh, want to do policy relevant research.